Good morning, everybody. It's good to see each one of you. It's good to be in God's house. Amen? Amen. Somebody asked me earlier, said, why aren't you wearing a mask to sing now? Well, I'll tell you why. I was watching the Grand Ole Opry the other night, and they didn't have masks on when they sang, and all the musicians did. So I figure if they can do it, we can do it. So it's good to be in God's house. I'm thankful that each one of you are here, and uh, we're going to open with a word of prayer. Unfortunately, today we've got a few technical issues with our screen, but we're going to get those hopefully working by next week. So when we sing... If you don't know the words, just hum real loud, okay? But we're going to open with prayer, and I know in, the, in a crowd this size that there are many needs, and I know there are some in our congregation that uh, need a touch from the Lord that aren't able to be with us today. And so if you've got a need on your heart, just make that known by an upraised hand. And uh, just take a moment to look around, and maybe you see a hand that you can remember this week in prayer. Uh, you'll say, I'm going to remember that one person or that one need. Thank the Lord. And we're going to go to prayer and ask the Lord to be with our time together. And again, I'm so excited. Yes. Okay. 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 So remember, Bill, he's uh, been uh, bit by a spider, a poisonous spider. And so it's a pretty serious one to remember him in prayer. And uh, at the end of service, we'll have a special prayer for Bill as well. Okay. And help me to remember that too, Sister Betty. Well, yeah. Okay. Jean. Sister Jean. Okay, remember remember the family of Gary Mullins. Yes. Yeah. And remember Sister Denise's niece as well. Uh, so remember her niece. Uh, also remember Cora Dwayne. Uh, Let's go to the Lord in prayer, and then we'll worship him in song. Father in heaven, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your love and your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for how you've blessed us. God, we pray that you would just be with this time together. You've heard the many requests that have been offered up, and even those that weren't spoken but unspoken by hands raised. God, we pray that you would be with each and every need. Be with those that aren't able to be with us today. Father, that you would raise them up from their beds of affliction. Be with all those that are dealing with the uh, coronavirus. And, Lord, those that are on the front lines, just protect them, God. We pray you'd be with our government, be with everything that uh, they do, Lord. We pray you'd bring them back to a knowledge of you, that they would honor you in all that they do, that they would get their wisdom from you. We pray that you'd be with this service. We commend it into your hands, that everything that's said and done would honor and glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory, and the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 15, 57. You know, it can be pretty discouraging sometimes looking around. Amen? But when we have Jesus, we have victory. And that's simply what this song talks about. Hallelujah, what a thought Jesus for salvation brought Victory, victory Let the power of sin assail Heaven's grace can never fail Victory, victory Here's the chorus Victory, yes, victory Hallelujah, I am free Jesus gives me victory chorus together. Victory, yes, victory. Hallelujah, I am free. Jesus gives me victory. Glory, glory, hallelujah. He is all and all to me. I am trusting in the Lord. I am standing on His word. Victory, Victory. I have peace and joy within since my life is free from sin. Victory. Victory. Here we go. Victory. Victory. Yes, victory. 
Hallelujah, I am free. Jesus, give me victory. Glory, glory. Hallelujah, he is all and on me. Now this next verse, it starts with the word shout. And most time when we sing it, a lot of people just go, shout your freedom everywhere. Well, I don't know about you, but if you've ever been trapped and you get free, you want to shout about it, right? So on the count of three, we're going to say shout, but we're going to say it real loud. You're going to shout it. Ready? One, two, three. Shout! Shout your freedom everywhere. His eternal peace declare. Victory. Victory. Let us sing it here below in the face of every foe. Victory. 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 Yes, victory. Hallelujah. I am free. Jesus gives me victory. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. He is all and all to me. We will sing it on that shore when this beating life is. Now, this song simply says, I'm going on. No matter what the devil does, I'm going on. And I don't know about you, but I'm going on. And the chorus is real simple. I'm going on, I'm going on. Unto the final triumph, I'm going on. If you're going on, sing that. I'm going on, I'm going on. Unto the final triumph, I'm going on. I'm going on, I'm going on, until the final triumph, I'm going on. Listen, I mean to go right on, until the crown is won. I mean to fight the fight, wait till life on earth is done. I'll never more turn back, defeat I shall not know, for God will give me victory. Onward I shall go Well I'm going on I'm going on Until the final triumph I'm going on Well I'm going on I'm going on Until the final triumph I'm going on Listen Should opposition come Should foes obstruct my way Persecution fire be lit as in the ancient day with Jesus by my side 
his peace within my soul. No matter if the battle's hot, I mean to win the goal. Well, I'm going on. I'm going Deprive me of my right. They ought to know until I reach that sea of delight. Well, I'm going on. I'm going on. Until final triumph. I'm going on. Well, I'm going on. I'm going on. Until final triumph. I'm going on. Then forward. Let us go, our heart with love and flame, our snowy banner borne aloft in striving Jesus' name, the host of evil queen, and heaven's open gates, inviting it out a hasten where eternal glory waves, well I'm going on, you going on, I'm going on, until the final triumph, I'm going God's amazing grace and the change that he makes in our life. Amen. I'm thankful that we don't have to be bound by the chains of sin. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. T'was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fear relieved. How precious need that grace appear the hour I first received. My chains are gone. My chains are gone. I've been set free. My God, my Savior, has ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace. The Lord has promised good to me, His word, my hope secure. He will my shield and push me as long as life My chains are gone, I've been set free. My God, my Savior, has ransomed me. The earth shall soon dissolve like snow, the sun forbear. 
to shine, but God who called me below will be forever mine, will be forever mine, my chains are gone, I've been set free, my God, my Savior has ransomed me. Promise keeper, 
Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Amen. Give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. I'm going to ask uh, Sister Joyce and Sister Jamie to come around here. Brother Harvey, it's in G. If you want to play along. I heard this song uh, this week. It's an old song. It just kind of brought back to my remembrance and uh, asked Joyce and Jamie this morning if they'd help me sing. My heart can sing when I pause to remember a heartache here is but a stepping stone along the path that's winding always upward this troubled world not my final home but until then my heart will go on singing but until then with joy I'll carry on until the day my eyes behold my Savior borrowed for a while the things of earth that cause this heart to tremble remember there will only bring a smile but until then my heart will go on singing with joy I'll carry on until the day my eyes behold my Savior until the day God calls me home but until then Growing up, sometimes my pastor would step to the pulpit after a 
exceptionally good song service, and he say, I feel like I've been in church already. Now, as a little kid that was a little antsy, you know what I was hoping he'd say next? You all can go home. And some of you are probably thinking that too. Well, we haven't been in church in a while. Yes, we've been online. Yes, we've been on the radio. And uh, that kind of was a prophecy of my daddy's. He said, you're going to be on the radio and I can't wait. I said, why, daddy? That's really nice. He said, A, because you got a face for radio. And B, because I can finally turn you off. That was my dad. But, yes, we've been online, we've been on the radio, but it's just not the same, is it? It's good to see you face to face. I'm going to tell you as your pastor, it's hard to preach to an empty room. Now, there are some pastors, they can't tell the difference. <laughs> but I'm thankful I've got a church and a congregation that they want to hear God's word, and they'll let you know if you're on the right track. They also let you know if you're on the wrong one too. And that's, we need that. And don't take my word for it. Take God's word for it. If I ever get out of this book, you have every right to come to me after church and say, look here, pastor. This was not right. Because let me tell you something. My desire is to serve Jesus and to keep on going and to make it to heaven. And the, the mission of this church is not to boast about Chabby's First Church of God. It's not even to fill these pews, although we would love to see this place full. The goal is to get to heaven and to take everybody else with you that you can. To let people know that they can live a victorious life right here on earth. They don't have to live in sin. They don't have to live in misery. Yeah, there are some tough times. Yeah, there are some struggles. But we can have joy within that nobody else understands because of Jesus. And I want the world to know that, don't you? Now, I hope y'all don't have too much on the stove that you're waiting on because I ain't been able to preach to you for a while. So we might be here just a little while. Is that all right? That's what I like. Plus, usually the scriptures and everything are on the screen. So I'm flying blind today. So you just hang on. <laughs> but, you know, we've been talking about building a kingdom and, you know, the world builds on all kinds of things. And I don't know about you, but I've seen everything that they build on other than one thing fall. Everything. And we learned a few weeks ago that the kingdom of God is the kingdom we've got to be building on because everything else is going to pass away. And to be a kingdom builder, first of all, we've got to be saved. Now, that's just sometimes that can get into Christian lingo that a lot of people, I don't need to be saved, I wasn't lost. I know right where I live. I've lived there 37 years. A lot of people don't understand, but what we mean by that is we realize that we've sinned. We realize that we've not been pleasing to God. We realize that we've messed up. And we realize that the only way that we can get better is because of Jesus. And when we accept Jesus into our life, and we sometimes say in church, into our heart, but that's not the blood pumping muscle that you see on the Discovery Channel. It means to get inside into your spirit, into your life, and change your life. Let me tell you something. When I knelt at an altar, and you don't always have to kneel at an altar, but when you kneel in your heart and you say yes to Jesus, and you say, I'm sorry for my sin, and you turn away from that thing, and you don't go back to it with God's help, and you ask Him not only to save you, but to be the Lord of your life, He will change you. He will change you. If you were to ask some people that I went to high school with, They'd say he was a good guy, but don't get him mad. Yeah. Oh, I like that noise over there. Mm, yeah, yeah. But God has helped me. Now, that doesn't mean that we can't get angry. Don't, don't take that in the wrong way. The Bible says be angry and sin not. And there are some things in this world we need as God-fearing people, as people that trust the Lord, to get mad about. But don't get mad at people. Get mad at the devil and sin and the causes of that sin. 
But many times we want to get angry at people. And I remember having just being angry and not liking who I was. But when God came in, he changed all that. Now that doesn't mean that I don't have moments every now and then. But I can ask forgiveness for those things, and it doesn't happen every day. It's not a, a habit. It's a thing that I try every day because I want to say yes to Jesus in everything that I do. Amen? I'm building on the kingdom. I want my wife to have a firm foundation on the kingdom as the husband of the home. I want to lead her and let her know that we're building our lives on the kingdom of God. And to build on the kingdom of God, we must be true worshipers. Worship, as we've talked about this is just the introduction. Worship is not a song. It's not a singer. It's not the first 30 minutes of what, you just, what we just had up here. It is an attitude of the heart. When we worship God, what we're saying inside is, God, you are it. I'm putting you above everything else. That's worship. And worship should be every day, not just on Sunday. Okay, I'm going to come preach over here for a while. Now, thank you. Now, not only should we be worshipers, but we should be ones that read His Word because you can't build if you don't have blueprints. And last week we talked about eating God's Word. Now, huh? Now, you know, you've seen the talk shows that people have these weird things that they, they uh, do, these, these conditions where they eat paper. That's not what I'm talking about. This was a, sim, a symbolic word to Ezekiel saying, eat this, consume it. The, the, the Hebrew word means to consume, to get this word inside you. Did you know God's word said it will never change? There's a lot of things that change in this world, but God's word never will. And to be kingdom builders, we must read his word. I put some links online that you can... Get some Bible reading plans so you can read the Bible in a year. I would encourage you, if that overwhelms you, then pick one book to read. If you're uh, married or if you've got some friends, you can call them. Say, we're going to read this book together. Now, one thing you've got to remember is the Bible is not like any other book. It's 66 books. So you can't start in Genesis and go straight to the, to the maps without understanding that. It's different types of books. There's poetry. There's history. There's the Gospels, which is the good news of Jesus Christ. And if you're new to the Bible, I encourage you to start there. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. There's all kinds of things. There's prophetic books. There are books of prophecy. There are books that um, will let you know about history and historical events that can be backed up by secular history, by the way. The Bible is true. And if you don't believe that, let's have a conversation. Because there's a lot more evidence out there that, that supports it outside of the Bible. The Bible supports itself, but also outside. There's all kinds of evidence that lets us know that this is the unadulterated Word of God. So we must be people of the book. But let's say things are going well. We're worshiping God. We're saying yes to God in our lives and we're, we're, we're worshiping Him in our life and we're reading His Word every day or, or even every other day. Maybe we forget a day, but we're faithful in getting Scripture. We listen to, to uh, the audio Bible. When we're going to work, we listen to God's Word and those are all great things. Um, we're doing all that, but what happens when things are going good, but then there's a turn? Things are going well and then everything around you seems to just go another way. What do we do then? Now there's a lot of people that say, well, do this or do this or do this. But how do you know who to listen to? How do you know who to listen to? When I, when I was a kid in youth group, we used to play a game where there would be an obstacle and you would, and, and I think our, our youth group has played it, um, there would be an obstacle course set up and you would be blindfolded and you would have a partner. And your partner would be instructing you through the blind to, to get through the obstacle course. But then there were everybody around you telling you all different directions and what you had to do was tune in on your partner so you could get the right directions, right? All the youth groups going, yeah, we played that. Well, you know, that's kind of like life because there's so many things telling us so many things who do we listen to daniel 
in Daniel chapter 6. And this is a very familiar story if you grew up in church. This is the, the, the account of Daniel in the lion's den. And what had happened is that Daniel had been taken in, into captivity and he had still decided he was going to serve God even if he was in a land that didn't serve God. And so there he is, and he gets elevated into a very high position. God has honored him and shown favor to him, and now he is one of the uh, governors, as they called it, in the land. He is high up. Things are going well. The gravy train has stopped at Daniel's door, and he is eating. Everything is good. But then people get jealous. Then people don't understand. And they go to the king and they say, King, and I'm paraphrasing, you need to do something because people are not worshiping you. They're worshiping other things. You need to, to make sure that everybody pays homage to you. And you need to make a decree. And they decided that if you didn't do that, they were going to throw you in the lion's den. Now, I don't know about you, but if you grew up in church and you've seen the, the, the pictures, you know, the, the little cartoon lions, they look real cute, don't they? These were not cartoon lions. These were not the cowardly lion. These were rough, tough, hard to bluff, hadn't eaten in days lions. These were like, throw him down, boys, we'll take care of him lions. But what does Daniel do knowing all of this? His world has taken a sharp turn. God has shown him favor. But what does he do? What does he do? And what do we do when we're doing what we know to do? We're serving God. We're doing the best we can. And our world takes a sharp turn. What do we do? And who do we listen to? I wonder if Daniel had the technology that we have today. Would he do like... So many people, nobody in here, but people I know, they would go online and look for their favorite YouTuber to get some advice, or they would get on a Twitter feed. And let me tell you something, Twitter is a dangerous thing, because one day they're telling you to be for something, and the next day you got to be against it. And if you say just the wrong thing, then you're gone too. So... What do we do in a world that is set up that way? Because it's not just Twitter. It's all over, folks. And I'm not trying to scare you, but that's where we live today. And this is not a political thing. This is a spiritual thing. And what do we do when there are so many voices saying here and go here and do this and this is wrong and this is bad, bad, bad and this you can't do this and you, and you better do this and if you don't like this then you don't like me and you da 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 and I just want to pull what hair I have left out. What do you do? Well, Daniel tells us in Daniel chapter 6. And after they make the decree, this is what Daniel does in Daniel chapter 6 and starting at verse 10. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, the decree, this is what he did. He went into his house, and his window being opened in his chamber toward Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day, and he prayed, and he gave thanks before God as he had always done. There it is. One verse today, pretty simple. When we don't know who to listen to, if we're kingdom builders, we listen to the king. And who's the king? The God of the Bible. Jehovah. Not some God that's manufactured. Not some God that they pray to and say amen and a woman. That's not the God of the Bible, by the way. And we need to pray for that pastor. Because he's not praying to the God of the Bible. But Daniel, catch this, he went up into his house. Now, if you don't know, if you've not read in 1 Kings, he had built on top of his house a prayer chamber. So even before all this started, Daniel had faith and he was going to talk to God. 
He had set a place aside every day that he would go up that faced Jerusalem. He was looking toward the city of God. He was looking toward God's favored nation. Now, does that mean that we always have to face the east to, to pray? No, but it, what it does help us remember is that when times get tough, who do we look to? We look to the hills which cometh our strength. We look to God. We look to spiritual Jerusalem. We look up. Instead of looking at all the crazy and getting our answers from other things that aren't of God, we look up and we do it more than once a day. We do it more than Sunday. We do it more than at the meal time. Married people, let me ask you a question. And don't answer this out loud because I don't know if I have enough time to counsel all of you after church. But uh, you just think about this right here. If you, if you only spoke to your spouse once a week, and don't none of you say amen right here. If you only spoke to your spouse once a week, what would happen? Uh-huh. Some of you going, amen, and you're trying to be cute right now, thinking, yeah, I wish my wife would shut up, or I wish my husband wouldn't talk to me for a week. But you know, in your heart of hearts, if they didn't talk to you for a week, you think something was wrong. If, for some of you, if they didn't talk to you the first thing they got up, you thought they were sick. Or they'd been struck with laryngitis. Some of you be like, my prayers have been answered. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> But what do you think God thinks? He wants a relationship, an intimate relationship with His children, and we only come to Him when we want something. Parents, think of this. When your children only come to you when they want something, do you love them any less? No. But you wish they'd come to you at other times, don't you? Your desire is that they just go fishing with you instead of asking you for money all the time. Does that make sense? Am I, am I putting it down where you can grab it? Because that, that's what God wants. God spiritually just wants you to go fishing with Him. He wants you to spend time with Him. And when we don't know who to listen to, when we start to spend time with God, His voice becomes louder than all the rest. And when the, when the crazy voices come, when the not right voices come, we'll know who to listen to. I don't know so many times I've, I've, I've been with people and they've said, well, I need some advice, preacher. You know, I know this is wrong, but I think it'd be okay in this case. And I have to, you know, I have to talk to my face in my head going, don't do that, just, just, just smile. Just smile because you know they're wrong. <laughs> Nobody here but people I know. <laughs> See, the problem is when we start getting our philosophy and our worldview and the way that we look at things from media. Whew, that's a whole nother hour right there. I don't even go go there. From, <laughs> from, from your Facebook news feed. Mmm. From your Twitter account, mm. from your friends that don't even know about God, mm. yeah. When we get that from TV, who? That's not God. Well, but preacher, you know, I'm not saying it's all bad. Don't get me wrong. But when you know God's voice, you can differentiate the real from the fake, and that's what Daniel did. And even in the midst of heartache, what did they do? Did everything go hunky-dory for Daniel when he prayed three times a day? No, it got him in hot water. People started looking at him. When we are in constant communication with God, we live in a world today that thinks that people that talk to God are mentally ill. That's true. When we talk to God, there is a definite difference. But let me tell you something. There's an old song that says, if I'm dreaming, don't wake me. Just let me dream on. 
Because living this life for Jesus is the best one I've ever known. Yeah. If you think this is a sign that I'm losing my mind, then just let me dream on. Just leave me alone because I've got communion with God. And just like Daniel, when the lions come, when they throw you in the pit, when it looks like everybody else has turned their back and they roll the stone over top of you, that's what they did to Daniel. And he's looking eyeball to eyeball with these big kitty cats, honey, and they're hungry, licking their lips, looking at him like a big bag of nine lives. What does he do? He bows down and says, God... I need you. The scripture doesn't plainly say it. But I believe he faced the east. And he knelt down. And the same times. He couldn't. He probably couldn't tell. But I bet he knew in his heart. Seems about time I need to talk to God. Yeah. Because it became a habit. It became something you always did. Just like many of you have a morning routine. Well, you... If you're serving Jesus, if you're a kingdom builder, then you need to make God not just your routine, but the one you go to. And Lord, help me to do that even more. Because when we give things to Him, then He will give us a peace even in the middle of the storm. Even in the middle of the lion's den, there will be peace. I think sometimes in my imagination, God shut those lions' mouth. You know, Daniel was in there for a while. I think he might have got tired. I wonder if them little lions just laid down and shut their mouth and he just curled up and put his head on one of them. Because when he responds to the king, look at what happens. Look at what happens. The king yelled down and said, the God that you serve, was He able to deliver you? That's verse 20 and verse 21. Then Daniel said unto the king, O king, live forever. My God has sent His angel and has shut the lion's mouth and they have not hurt me for as much as before Him innocency was found in me and also before thee, O king, have I done thee no harm. God protected me. God will send an angel. He'll send you an angel of peace in times of heartache. He will send you an angel of mercy when you need it. He will send you an angel of wisdom when you need it. He'll give you the gift of wisdom to know what to do when you're in the den of lions. Keep talking to Him. See, kingdom builders worship in the heart. They say yes to Jesus. Kingdom builders read the word and kingdom builders talk to God all the time. Brother Andrew in his book Practicing the Presence of God said this. He said, speaking to God is not ritual but practical conversation. Yeah. You ever have practical conversation with God? Do you get up and say, good morning, Lord? Or do you get up and go, good Lord, it's morning? Yeah, there are days when we don't feel saved. There are days when we don't feel like it. There are days when our emotions and our flesh and all of these things come against us. But in those times, more importantly, we need to talk to God. When we allow the problems of life to build up, we explode. But when we give them to God, He gives us His peace. It kind of looks something like this. Now, I have three cups here. And they're going to represent three different people. Okay? And let's look at what happens. The water is going to represent our problems and the different voices and the things that we deal with. Now, 
we, we have those problems, and everybody has issues, everybody has problems, and we try to deal with them on our own. We try to deal with them by just, you know, reading a self-help book or just listening to what everybody else says, or maybe we go to a friend and we try to talk to them about it, but they're kind of doing the same thing. They're listening to everybody else. What happens? Well, we still have problems, don't we? And maybe this is the other person that he's listening to everybody's problem, but he's got problems too, and he really didn't know where to turn. And, and, you know, he's just doing his own thing. And when we do that, we allow bitterness and hate and all kinds of things to creep in. And then what happens is not only do we have problems, but we have all that other stuff on top of it. But if we dare to be like Daniel, in this empty cup, and we have problems, and we give them to God, you know what happens? We have peace. We have peace. We have peace. When the world comes against us, and everything is going wrong, we have peace. Now that's just a little surprise for your eyes. And don't spend the rest of the message trying to figure out how I did it, because I'm not going to tell you. But here's the point. You can have peace when you pray to the Master. Amen? You can have peace. The world is full of trouble. Jesus said, in this world you will have trouble. And a lot of people want their trouble. And they say, it's just the way it is. But he says, I have overcome the world. So today, I encourage you kingdom builders to pray to the Master. To seek His face. To make it a conversation. How do I pray? I've never prayed, preacher. I don't know what that is. You talk to God just like you're talking to me, but you do it with respect. Amen? Maybe you don't know where to turn. Focus on the right voice, which is God. Kingdom builders always focus on the right voice. And the way to do that is to talk to Him every day. I encourage you today, this week, to talk to God even more. This week, Kingdom Builders, let's talk to God even more. Let's set aside even more time. If we pray five minutes a day, let's make it ten. It, 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 whatever it is, let's talk to God even more. Let's even, in our hearts today, as we leave this place, I'm going to pray even more. Spouses, maybe get together. Children, get together with siblings and say, hey, let's pray together. Because that holds you accountable, doesn't it? Now, I'm going to throw something in here for free. Well, I, I don't like to pray out loud. And you know, you want me to pray with my spouse, I, I don't really do that because they might laugh at me. Well, First of all, if they laugh at you while they're praying, you need to pray for them even more. Second of all, any woman I know that's serving God, when they hear their man pray, makes their liver quiver. Any man of God that is sought a woman of God, when he hears his wife pray over their children, woo! it solidifies their relationship even more. Now, before you go think, well, I never did that. We never did that before. Start today. It's never too late to do the right thing. It's never too late to do the right thing. Oh, well, you don't know where I've been. You don't know what I've done. I don't care. Neither does God. Go to Him. Ask for forgiveness. Let Him cleanse you. And then keep marching on, people. I don't just sing I'm going on because it's a fast, catchy song. I'm singing it because I mean it. I'm going on. And I don't care what the devil throws at me. I don't care what happens. I'm going on until I meet Jesus. And you know, I want you to go with me. But if you're going to drag me down, then just hang on. Just stay. But I want you to come with me. Because when I get to heaven, I want you there. 
I missed you being together. I missed not seeing you. And I love each and every one of you. And I can't imagine heaven without you. I mean that with all my heart. So let us pray and seek God. With all our heart. That's nothing super spiritual. Sometimes we make that so spiritual and so hard. No, it's talking to God every day. That's all it is. And when we do that and we, we match it up with His Word, because God's voice will never contradict God's Word. Believe that. God's voice will never contradict God's Word. Quick example. People come to me and say, Well, you know, I'm married, but uh, I believe God has sent me this other person that I've seen at the gym. And, you know, he's not perfect, but I think he'd be all right. God told me, no, God didn't tell you. The devil masquerades as an angel of light, and the devil is a liar. And that is not true. If he was a good man, he wouldn't be trying to holler at you when he seen your wedding ring. Whew, okay. <laughs> My point is this. Kingdom builders focus on his voice. And to hear his voice, you must be in constant conversation. Amen? We're going to pray, and I want to thank our live stream audience for watching. And I'm going to ask you, those that are here, once we finish our live stream, if you'll wait just for a moment, we've got a few announcements. But God bless you. Thank you for being here. I pray this has been an encouragement to you. Let us be kingdom builders this week. And for those of you online and, and all of you here, starting tonight at 6 o'clock, uh, our youth and our children, guys, we, we, it's just been so crazy. We're going to start a youth and children meeting. We're going to do a, a teenager or a, a younger, younger teens and, and little guys. And then, uh, and I think the age is, uh, what was that, Cassie? Help me. Yeah. 8 to 12, we're not going to be hard and fast on that, okay? Um, and then uh, 13 to 18, 19, we do have some college kids and some kids that are just out of high school that would like to be involved in youth still, and, and you're allowed, so if you're listening, <clears throat> if you're listening, uh, <clears throat> you, you, uh, you, uh, you can still be on our Zoom meeting tonight, okay? So uh, if you need the links to that, they're on our website www.chabbiesfirstchurch.org. Also, um, if you go on our Facebook page that you're probably watching this on, uh, down a few posts are the links, so search for them. And then later on this afternoon, I'll probably post those again on our Facebook page so that you can find them. So please join us tonight at 6 if you fall into those two groups. Adults, we're working on you. We're going to try to do a Zoom thing for you possible. Um, if you can, if you if you'd like that, we're going to, we're working on it. We still have our Wednesday night Bible study, uh, so please tune into that at seven. That'll still be here uh, online. We don't we still don't have in person on Wednesday night. Okay, thank you for watching live stream. We're going to pray, and then for those of you here, if you'll just wait a few moments, Father, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for this message. We pray that you would help us today to talk to you constantly. We would pray.